Seven years ago, I had the Surface Pro 3. I used it for a lot of coding and taking notes in class when I was in university, and I absolutely loved the experience. The stylus and the touch interface with Windows was a completely new direction for Microsoft, and they kept moving forward with the Pro series. Every year, they've been refining the design and updating the specs to keep up with modern hardware. Seven years later, we have this, the Surface Pro 8. And I'm really excited to look at the improvements and talk about my experience using it for a few weeks. You see, Microsoft is targeting this device for people who want to feel more connected with their content. So that would include artists, professionals who mostly do basic productivity tasks, and most importantly, students. They value things like battery life, portability, display, and to some extent, performance. So can the Surface Pro 8 deliver those checkpoints? Well, let's start things off with the price. The base model starts at $1,100, which gets you 11th gen Core i5 CPU, 8 gigabytes of RAM, and a 128 gigabyte SSD. Seriously, Microsoft? 120 gigabytes? Like, is that a joke? Uh, you know what's even worse? Spending an extra $100 to get a 256 gigabyte model. Guys, that to me is just not acceptable for the hard-earned money that you're spending. I have the model with the i7-1185G7 CPU and twice the memory, and it costs $1,600. You can obviously spec it out with 32 gigabytes of RAM and a terabyte SSD for a whopping $2,400. So things are not looking that great from a value standpoint, especially since you don't get the stylus or even the type cover. Uh, those two accessories will set you back an extra $280. So you are gonna be paying quite the penny for this whole setup if you're really interested in it. But you know what? It's got a lot to offer despite its price tag. Let's start with the design. The whole chassis is made out of anodized aluminum and it comes in this beautiful matte black finish and I personally love it. The edges are more rounded compared to the squared setup on the Surface Pro 7. This certainly complements the handling when you're carrying this thing every day. Build quality is fantastic and the kickstand is robust. Plus, it can go nearly 180 degrees. So it's a little bit more flexible compared to the Surface Pro 7. Now, before I talk about how portable it is, um, let's hear a quick word from today's video sponsor. Put everything on display, you say? The Tower 100 Mini by Thermaltake grants you a three-way view of your components with that mini vending machine look that is surely unique for an ITX enclosure. You've got ATX power supply support, large CPU tower heat sinks, triple slot GPUs with no riser necessary, and all the ventilated panels are properly dustproof. The motherboard I.O. is facing up for easy access, and the two included fans ensure proper airflow out of the box. This Tower 100 Mini is for those who like to explore. Check it out below. So it's pretty clear that the Surface Pro 8 isn't your traditional thin and light laptop. It's essentially a Windows-based tablet that can pretty much run desktop class applications. But how does that translate into portability? Well, as you can see, considering the specs packed under the hood, it is pretty impressive, guys. The Z height is only 0.37 inches or 9.4 millimeters. And if you add the type cover, it only adds an extra 0.2 inches. So that makes it thinner than some of the other laptops that you're seeing over here. Uh, it only weighs around two pounds, which is ideal for anybody who doesn't want to carry a thick and heavy laptop. I had no issues fitting this thing inside my messenger bag. So from a portability standpoint, this thing exceeded my expectations. The included 65 watt power adapter is pretty compact and I'm glad that they've still kept the USB type A charging port if you wanna charge other devices like your smartphone. Although I did wish if it supported fast charge. Uh, the power connector is still the same proprietary magnetic pin that uh, you know simply snaps onto the device. It has an LED light uh, just to indicate that it's charging but it doesn't change color when it's fully charged. I am a little bit worried about the longevity of this connector because it's mostly made out of plastic, but I guess time will tell. Now, I did try my OnePlus 65 watt USB-C charger and it worked, but I did get a notification saying that it's charging slowly and that it recommends using the stock power supply. Now, the biggest upgrade to the Surface Pro 8 is the larger display. Uh, you're not getting a 13.3 inch screen with a 16 by 10 aspect ratio versus 12.3 inches on the Surface Pro 7. So this basically results in thinner bezels and obviously you get more screen real estate to view your content. And the quality of this display is really good. As you can see, it covers 100% sRGB, 80% Adobe RGB, and 83% DCI-P3. So it's great for photo editing and some designing work. And on top of that, it comes with 120 hertz refresh rate. That makes the whole navigation experience a lot smoother compared to 60 hertz. Now keep in mind that out of the box, it does come set to 60 hertz, so you'll have to go in manually and change that to 120. Uh, 
Now, this was done to preserve battery life, but I set it to 120 right away, and the results were surprising. More on that in a bit. As for brightness levels, my sample topped out at 460 nits, so that's plenty enough to uh, view content outdoors. Let's also not forget that this is a tablet, so the touch experience was normal. I mean, there's nothing really more to describe other than the fact that it works. Uh, the responsiveness is good, and if you want precise control over the content that you're working with, um, you have the Surface Slim Pen too. Yes, it is an additional investment, but it actually goes hand in hand with the tablet, guys. For instance, if you click the top button over here, it quickly opens Microsoft's whiteboard, which instantly lets you jot down notes uh, or just anything that you want to do. And if you want to quickly erase them, simply just use it as an eraser and it's pressure sensitive. So if you want to erase a tiny portion, a gentle tap would do the trick. But if you want to erase everything, just quickly apply a little bit of pressure and you're good to go. I mean, how cool is that? Not to mention, Microsoft has deeply integrated their Office ecosystem with the pen, and a lot of third-party applications like Adobe have already rolled out support for Ink. So you can really take your drawing skills to a whole new level with this setup. Personally, I don't draw a lot, but I think this device is calling me to take action on that. So who knows, maybe I'll get on that very soon. I want to quickly talk about the port setup on this device. Uh, it's very limited. As you can see, you only get two USB Type-C Thunderbolt 4 ports, a headphone jack, and a volume marker, and that's pretty much it. I would have liked to see a full-size USB Type-A port, but given the thin form factor of this device, compromises had to be made, so I'm okay with that. That being said, you've got Thunderbolt, so if you want to use an external dock to pair it up with a display, keyboard, and a bunch of other peripherals, there is that option, albeit quite an expensive one, of course. Upgradability is also very limited on the Surface Pro 8. You only have quick access to the M.2 2230 NVMe SSD. The speeds are not that bad. I've seen faster ones before, uh, but for this form factor, it's passable. This is what the webcam looks like. The quality is good. It's a 1080p sensor, so it's slightly larger compared to some of the other Windows laptops out there. Uh, what's really cool is because of the larger sensor, Windows Hello works really well. So I had no issues logging into this PC. Uh, it's pretty accurate. And the other thing I want to pay attention to is the microphone quality because it sounds immaculate. It almost sounds as if I'm talking to a studio microphone, which is just awesome. So for meetings and all that kind of stuff, this is a great option, guys. The speakers are surprisingly good on the Surface Pro 8. Uh, they are front-facing, and the treble sound nicely detailed with a little bit of bass. It's honestly perfect for watching videos and just listening to some music. All right, there's one more accessory that I need to cover, and quite an important one, too. It's this Surface Pro signature keyboard. Yes, you'll have to pay a little bit more for it, but if you want to use a Surface Pro 8 as a laptop, this is the only option you have aside from using a Bluetooth setup, which might not be as ideal or appealing as this one over here. So for starters, it basically just snaps onto the proprietary type port on the bottom of the device. And right away, you can see that there is a little compartment to store the Slim Pen 2, which also snaps to the keyboard and it wirelessly charges the pen. Pretty cool. Now, if you want to angle the keyboard for a slightly better typing experience, you can simply lift the keyboard and it just snaps onto the bottom bezel. The keyboard layout is pretty standard with the keys being adequately spaced and sized, including the arrow functions. And the keys are really good. There's a good amount of travel distance and feedback. Honestly, it felt very similar to my XPS 13 OLED, which as many of you may know, has one of the best keyboards on the market. It's also backlit with three brightness adjustments. I had no issues viewing it at night. The trackpad is great. It uses a glass surface, so navigation is really smooth and responsive. In fact, I would actually go on record and say that it is better than my XPS 13. The primary left and right buttons are tactile and really satisfying to press, and I have no complaints with the functionality, except for the fact that it's too small. I mean, look, I'm so used to larger trackpads on Windows laptops, so switching to this was a bit of a challenge but maybe I just need to give myself some time to get used to this. Now, this cover is made out of Alcantara, which looks great when you unbox it, and this red color really pops. Fun fact, Mike is obsessed with that word. But I'm really worried about the longevity of this material. Now, don't get me wrong, it's super soft and comfortable to type with, but let's face it, if you get grease and all sorts of stain on it over time, it will show signs of wearing, and 
While there are ways to clean it, it's nowhere close to using a simple cleaning solution and a microfiber cloth. So keep that in mind before you pull the trigger. Uh, you can go for the regular type cover that's made out of plastic, but unfortunately, uh, it doesn't come with the built-in compartment uh, to store the slim pen. Last but not least, we gotta talk about performance. Now, I have the sample with the Core i5 model, specifically the 1185G7 with four cores and eight threads, and this processor has a configurable TDP of up to 28 watts. Now, I was going into this review thinking that Microsoft would cap that power to 15 or 20 watts due to the slim nature of this device, but boy, was I wrong. While a lot of other laptops with the i7-1185G7 top out at 25 watts or under, the Surface Pro ends up hovering between 27 watts and 29 watts, and it doesn't move from that point either. With that kind of juice, clock speeds never ever went below four gigahertz during an all-core workload, and that's actually a new record for my tests. Most of the other devices that I looked at ended up way, way below that. Now you might think that leads to higher CPU temperatures, but it actually doesn't. I think a lot of that is because of the Pro 8's airflow that goes in a more natural upwards direction since all the components are placed vertically instead of horizontally like every other laptop. And no, the heat isn't completely transferred to the outside either, at least not all that much. Uh, it never got uncomfortably hot to the touch and all the heat is exhausted out the top away from your hands and the keyboard. Uh, there were some hot spots towards the center, but luckily those are comfortably away from your hands when you're holding it in tablet mode. Now don't think that this thing acts like a typical tablet either, since it does have a fan and when it's under stress, it does become somewhat audible. You can hear it, but it never gets loud enough to be annoying. So how does this all translate to real world applications? Well, you have an i7-1185G7 running at the highest wattage I've seen so far, which means this is the fastest Intel-based ultra portable I've seen. In multi-core workloads, the only laptops that can beat it consistently are rocking the Ryzen CPUs with double the number of processing threads. I mean, the 5800U and 5700U are absolute beasts in some benchmarks, but they're also pretty hard to find these days. Uh, there's some clear wins over those two, especially when it comes to GPU accelerator apps like Premiere, where the XE graphics really helps things along. The Surface Pro 8 jumps out to a lead in lightly thread workloads as well, and that makes it a pretty good ultra portable device for professionals. It's just an awesome all around device, guys, but you have to pay for that privilege too. And if you want to do some light gaming, it actually puts down some impressive results. I mean, it is one of the fastest laptops that I've tested in this category, sometimes by a long shot. I mean, Microsoft did pump over 25 watts into the CPU and the XE GPU, and of course, that leads to a lot better performance than some of the alternatives. It also looks like Intel's even fixed a bunch of compatibility and frame rate problems we've experienced since instead of crashing in apps like Rainbow Six, all of the laptops now power through Windows without any issues. That's good news, but I'm still wondering why it took this long to get that addressed. Battery life on this device blew my mind, guys. This is one of those areas where Microsoft really put some effort into, and it really shows. Its i7-1185G7 goes into an ultra low hybrid power state when doing simple tasks like web browsing, and that allows it to get some of the best battery life I've seen from an Intel-based thin and light device. It's even better than many laptops with bigger batteries and the same size displays. But once you go out of that lower power mode and start loading up the Pro 8, the battery life goes down to a more normal result of under three hours. A lot of that's because the processor writes between two extremes. You've got the ultra low power mode during lighter workloads and a lot higher power uh, than expected during more demanding tasks. So does the new Surface Pro 8 deliver these checkpoints that I mentioned at the beginning of this video? Absolutely, it's extremely portable. You don't need a super sized bag to carry this thing around. And honestly, it just feels like carrying a notebook because it's really thin. The stylus experience is really cool and Microsoft values designers and just anyone looking to take advantage of this accessory. The app support is great. And if you're a student, I think you're really gonna love taking notes in class with the Pro 8. The battery life is superb. The display is fantastic and with the 120 hertz refresh rate. And finally, the performance coming out of this tiny thing is incredible. I would actually pick this over my XPS 13. The only downside is the price and the specs that you get for it. I mean, 120 gigabytes as base storage is unusable with Windows, and you have to spend more money to experience this whole thing, which includes the slim pen and the uh, type cover. Because if you just buy the tablet, it's just incomplete. I really hope Microsoft can bundle some of these accessories with the Surface Pro series in the future, but as it stands, this whole thing is too pricey, guys. 
So on that note, thank you so much for watching. I hope you were able to take away everything that you needed to know about the Microsoft Surface Pro 8. Let me know what you think. Uh, honestly, I am excited to use this thing here in the studio for just casual stuff because, God, the battery life is so good. Anyways, that's it for me, guys. I'll talk to you guys in the next one.